Great. So my name is Lauren. My pronouns are she, her, and I would like to start today with a land acknowledgement. Well, you may be joining us from all over the world. Today, we are here in London, Ontario. We acknowledge the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and the Chinunktan nations whose traditional lands we are gathered upon today. So welcome. We're so excited to have you here tonight for our Arts and Humanities evening. Now, before I go through the itinerary for tonight, let's go through a few housekeeping items. First, we have enabled the live closed captioning for this webinar. If you'd like to turn it on, you'll find the live transcript button on the bottom bar. Then you can choose show subtitle. A box will appear and you can put it wherever you'd like on the screen. The other option is to choose view full transcript and the transcript will pop up in a sidebar. Now just remember this is live closed captioning, so I can't guarantee the accuracy. Next, your audio and video will remain off, but that doesn't mean that we won't be interacting together. We will have polls throughout the event and we also want to be able to answer all of your questions. You can submit a question using the Q&A box and you'll find this at the bottom of your screen. You can enter questions now or whenever you think of them. I'm joined by lots of friends from Western tonight, staff, faculty, students, and we'll do our best to answer your questions as they come up. We're also gonna choose some common questions and answer them together live at the end. So what's happening tonight? Here you go. We're gonna start with a welcome and a Faculty of Arts and Humanities overview with Associate Dean Academic and Professor in the Department of Philosophy, Dr. Tracy Isaacs. Then we'll watch a video introducing our new creative arts program, creative arts and production program, I should say, sorry. Then following that is an overview of the academic counseling supports after that, we're going to let our students take over for a panel to tell you what it's really like at Western. And finally, we'll all join together at the end to answer some questions live. Now, I do want to remind you that we have lots of other presentations available for you to sign up for. We have our next Next Steps presentation coming up on April 28th. That's this Thursday. You can sign up for that or watch the recording once it's been posted to our website. This is a really helpful presentation for anyone looking to understand what it is they need to do next before they come to Western. We'll also have presentations about our other faculties, residents, and student experience that you can check out. Everything is done through the same webpage you used to sign up for this presentation, welcome.uwo.ca slash presentations. Now, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better. So here's the first of two polls. Where are you tuning in from today? Give that just a few seconds. Okay. All right, looks like most of you have answered that. So we're gonna close that off. I love that there's so many people tuning in from another province in Canada, but lots are tuning in from London and a few of you from an international destination as well. My second poll, because I, I just really want to get to know everybody, is what are you most looking forward to when you come to Western? Is it choosing your program and courses, meeting new people, moving away from home, maybe trying something new? Perhaps meeting Misha, President Shepherd's dog? or you can't decide, it all sounds fantastic, so all of the above. We'll just give that a few more seconds. All right, we're gonna end that off. Excellent, I know Misha is a pretty popular uh, mascot on our campus, but I love that there's so many of you that really just are so excited for almost everything. You can't decide, but I think choosing your program and your courses is also pretty important as well. All right, so I would like to now kick things off by introducing Dr. Tracy Isaacs, our Associate Dean Academic and Professor in the Department of Philosophy. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I am Tracy Isaacs, and um, as Lauren said, I'm the Associate Dean in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, and I'm a Professor in Philosophy. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm very pleased you could all join us tonight. We have um, prepared a video 
for you to give you an overview of what to expect when you join us. And it's got a message from the Dean, some frequently asked questions. There are student perspectives in our video, a day in the life of a recent graduate and a campus tour um, that our Arts and Humanities Student Council put together for us. So sit back and enjoy. And if the, any questions come up for you during the, during the video, just feel free to put them in the Q&A and we will get to them. It's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's event. You're coming off two years of pandemic studies and you're looking forward to something a little more exciting in the years ahead. And I hope that you will consider the Faculty of Arts and Humanities here at Western. Is that we have really the very best subject matter at the university. Literature or art or film or language or the world of ideas, this is where you can study the subject matter of our humanity, what it means to be a human being. In a time that we're living, where issues are so complex and there is so much conflict in the world, the kind of study that allows us to consider our humanity is really vital. While you're studying that, you're also gaining real practical skills in critical thinking, in communication, in formulating arguments, and presenting clear writing. These turn out to be really important, employable skills that will allow you to pursue the careers that you want in the years ahead. And here at Western, we provide programs to study these topics, not only in the classroom, but out in the community as well. We are deeply invested in community-engaged learning and uh, work-integrated learning. We combine the theoretical and the practical to provide an education in the arts humanities. Take advantage of tonight's program to get all the information that you need, and hope at the end that we'll see you here in September. Thank you. My name is Nadia and I'm studying philosophy at Western and I think my favorite thing about the philosophy department is definitely the course selection because as an undergrad I've been able to take courses anywhere from philosophy of science and existentialism to early modern philosophy and ethics. So if you're anything like me and you struggle with figuring out what kinds of areas you want to focus your studies on, Western is a really good place to be able to test all those options out. me is University Drive, which is the main entrance to campus from Richmond. The question is, what equipment do I need? Well, most students have a laptop. That's pretty much the main equipment that you need. It would be really hard to get by without it. It might be a good opportunity to get a new one. And you can have a fresh notebook and a new pen and you'll pretty much be all set. You might also need some program specific equipment, like for if you're doing studio art, you'll need art supplies. You will need uh, readings for some of your classes. You might need to buy some books, uh, but everybody is gonna tell you exactly what you need for their courses in order to do your best. I love Western Arts and Humanities and Sasa so much because they've helped me to explore all the different aspects of my arts interests that I never thought I would be able to explore in high school. Arts and Humanities have allowed me to take courses that I never thought I'd be able to, that I never thought I'd be interested in and that I never thought I would have interest in, but I ended up loving and I ended up wanting to pursue future, uh, oh, that I ended up wanting to pursue in the future as, as something that I seriously was interested in. And Sasa has given me a cohort of students that are equally interested and engaged with me that want to tackle important issues towards the future. Um, I'm forever grateful for my experiences in arts and I don't think I'll ever trade them for the world. I am sitting right now in study space in Lawson Hall, which is one of the buildings that arts and humanities departments on campus are in. And as you can see, there's some comfortable space here where you can come and read or do work, set up your laptop. We also have study spaces in University College. We have a quiet room in University College. And there are lots of different options for you other than the library, though of course you can study in the library. So if you want a place to study on campus, there's lots of space for you.
I'm Jack, the HSC president. Today, me and some of the other execs are going to take you on a tour through University College. Come on in! I'm VP Events this year for our HSC, and we are in Conrad Hall. This is the venue where we used to have convocation originally, where people used to graduate. But now we have big classes here, big arts and humanities classes, lots of events, like speaker series, and every other week we have council meetings here. I'm Bridget, I'm the Vice President of Communications, and UC has study spaces on the first, second, third, and fourth floor of the building. You'll find lots of comfy chairs, natural light, outlets to plug in all of your devices, not to mention how clean and new the space feels. Hi everyone, my name is Celine. I'm your current USC counselor. I'm here right under the Languages and Culture sign in the UC office. Um, because I am personally a double major in linguistics and SASA. If you come with me, I'll show you where the French Studies Department is held. So here we are, we're at French Studies. This is actually where the linguistics program is held. It's held under the Department of French Studies. And as you can see here, we have notices and news bulletins of everything that's going on in the faculty. So you'll always stay in the know. back in the basement of the UC. Here is where you'll find the two vending machines and the Theo's coffee machine if you ever want a quick snack in between classes. So these two do take student cards, but all three take pretty much any kind of payment you can imagine. And if you want my recommendation on which drink is the best, I would say get the French vanilla. Hi, I'm Joyce and I'm the VP Academics on HSC. And this is the Academic Counseling Office, where you can drop by to ask questions about courses, how are you progressing in your modules and programs, discovery credits, or even if you want to find out going to international transfer. Um, so you can drop by the office to, with our lovely academic counselors, Ben and Jennifer, to have all your questions answered. This is the Dean's Office, and this is the home of the Dean, the Associate Deans, and staff, and this is where they work exceptionally hard to make the student experience and everything associated the best possible it can be for all arts and humanities. This is my HSC office. Usually members of council will be here during their office hours and you can drop by any time of the week to ask them questions if you need directions to your class, if you have any questions about academic life or student experience. If you're ever hungry, we also have a microwave and a kettle and lots of snacks for you to take home. Also, if you are interested in reading, we have a mini library and publications for you to take home as well. So you can usually find most arts and humanities students here at University College. However, you'll also find us in a lot of other beautiful buildings on campus, and we're really excited to show you all of the best spots. I wanted to quickly highlight English 1022E, which is a course that I'm finishing up right now. Um, and the reason I bring up this course, um, 
As a first year student, it's easily been the number one motivation for me to continue with English. Um, I know enriched sounds difficult, sounds tedious, but I promise you it is so worth it. Not only has it developed me as a writer, as a thinker, as a student, but the silver lining, even when it gets difficult, has always been that I've never been bored by this course at one point. And it's even, you know, helped me appreciate poetry in a way that I never had before and I never thought I would. So there's definitely a lot to take out of this course. Um, and if you're able to take it, if you're comfortable with taking it, please do. So worth it. But that's just my two cents. I know you guys will make an amazing decision regardless. We're sitting here in front of the University Community Center, the UCC. Students spend a lot of time right here on Concrete Beach on a beautiful day like this, especially sitting in our Muskoka chairs. And I am answering a question right now about first year entrance scholarships for arts and humanities students. So what kind of first year scholarships are there for arts and humanities students, you might ask, Sydney? Um, well, every arts and humanities student in first year gets at least $2,000 from the faculty, sometimes more, it depends, uh, and it's guaranteed if you accept your offer of admission and you're taking at least two courses on November 1st in arts and humanities. I will be graduating this year with a major in criminology and a minor in Spanish. But my favorite courses at Western were my Spanish courses. Not only do you get to study the language itself, but you also get to learn more about the culture. And it provides you with a lot of opportunities of traveling or even studying abroad, which a lot of students in my classes enjoyed. Last summer, I had the opportunity to be a part of the internship program through the Spanish department. And it was one of the best experiences I could have had. I highly recommend taking language courses at Western since we live in such a diverse community whether you're taking business, psychology, or any other field of study, you could also just do a minor or certificate in a language in order to get that extra bonus. Overall, I'm very happy that I chose to study Spanish at Western and be a part of the Department of Language and Cultures since it made my experience at Western overall better. I am now standing in front of the concrete beach and behind that is the UCC, the University Community Center. And you'll spend some time there getting food and going to the bookstore and, and so forth. A lot of students want to know academically, what does the first year in art, as an arts and humanities student look like? Well, it's a general year. For most of the programs, you will not have specified yet what you want to do. So your first year is all about sampling. And then in February, during the intent to register period, you will decide what it is that you want to study, what your major or double major or honor specialization is going to be. Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm just going to be speaking a little bit about the gender studies department here at Western. Um, so I myself, am completing my fourth year of an honor specialization in the program and I can say that I have absolutely loved every moment of it. Um, between the classmates that I have made formed connections with, the profs that have taught me things I didn't even know were possible, I have had the most amazing experience in the department. The main leadership opportunity is Arts and Humanities Student Council. You can be on the executive, you can be a representative of a department, but there are also opportunities to get involved on campus in student publications and uh, clubs. So there's lots of leadership opportunities and extracurricular activities for students at Western in Arts and Humanities. I'm in my fourth year at Western studying studio art and art history with a minor in museum and curatorial studies. And today I'll be telling you a little bit about why I love Western so much. As a first generation Canadian and a first generation university student, Western in particular has offered me opportunities that my parents never had the opportunity to pursue. 
I am studying studio art and art history, like I said, and this year I was lucky enough to have been selected for an internship opportunity through the visual arts department taking place at the Children's Museum here in London, the very first of its kind in Canada. One of my other favorite things about the visual arts department is the AJE, an annual juried exhibit that is held at Western's very own Art Lab Gallery. This year, one of my works was selected and I was lucky enough to have participated in such a program. This is a wonderful way for artists and students to get their work out there, their name out there, and pursue their future dreams and artistic endeavors. Definitely are opportunities for you to do internships as a Western Arts and Humanities student. Usually those opportunities are available to third and fourth year students. Some of them are program specific. For example, in SASA, all the students do an internship. And also in visual arts, there are internship opportunities. But really any student in Arts and Humanities can do an internship in third or fourth year uh, you can either bring us your own and we will review it and approve it and then you can go do it uh, and do it for credit. Or you can use the portal offered through student experience that has a host of different opportunities that will hook up students who are interested with employers who are looking for students to do internships. And those internships can be paid or unpaid. They can be for credit or not for credit. I think what makes Classics at Western so unique is how close-knit the community is. Many of our students study together, and we have an undergraduate classic society which organizes classic-themed events such as movie nights and Jeopardy. All the professors are so passionate about what they teach, and they really go to their way to support students and help them succeed. There's so many opportunities for students in the Classics department, including study tours to Greece and Italy, where you'll get to visit all the amazing sites you will have learned about throughout your degree. No matter what aspect of classics you're interested in, whether it's archaeology, literature, mythology, or ancient languages, there's a class for it. And the skills you develop by studying classics, like critical and analytical thought, are immensely useful, and this is why classics graduates find success in such a variety of fields. Overall, studying classics at Western is an amazing experience which I would recommend to anyone. And this is where you'll come if you have questions about your academic programming, if you need some help finding your way around uh, the university, getting accommodations perhaps, if you encounter some kind of issue. So this is where you come for your main source of academic support. And one of the great things about Arts and Humanities is it's a small community within a large university. And so when you come to academic counseling, our counselors, Ben and Amanda, are gonna know your name our counseling assistant, Roma, is going to know your name and you're going to feel at home and comfortable and supported. Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm a third year student at Western University completing a minor in French studies alongside my other modules. So why should you choose to study French at Western? Well, to begin with, it's a really versatile program where you'll find uh, that you can really make it anything you want. You can do anything from a certificate in practical French all the way up to an honors specialization. The professors are all extremely knowledgeable and there's lots of opportunities to engage in and outside the classroom. I recently started a research placement where I'll be working on French manuscripts from the 15 and 1600s and doing some transcribing. There's so many opportunities, like I said, and that, that can be with the French club or with the French studies department representative on the Arts and Humanities Student Council. Um, it's also something that I've noted and something that's made a real difference in my experience is that the classrooms are really small, so you end up getting to know your peers really well. I'm sitting in front of the Macintosh Gallery, which is an uh, art gallery on campus, and it's a good time to talk about creative opportunities that are available for students. If you're an Arts and Humanities student, the Student Council has publications for your creative or scholarly work, poetry, uh, short stories, essays. Uh, there are also specific journals within departments uh, and programs. And if you're a visual arts student working on studio, of course, your work will be part of exhibitions. You will have opportunities to show your work in the visual arts building. If theater is more your thing, then you can get involved in the Summer Shakespeare production 
or in the theater productions uh, during the school year in French or in English. There are lots of opportunities to be on the stage or to work behind the scenes in these productions. Hey, hi, hello. My name is Francesca and I am a 2021 English Lit and SASA graduate currently living and working in Vancouver, British Columbia as a corporate communications coordinator for the LedCore group of companies. And this is what that looks like. And that's me. Sadly, I continue to work from home most of the time with only occasional trips into the office, so this is my setup. I'm currently working on some Adobe training as we're integrating new software into the company. LedCore is a large company involved in the construction and infrastructure industries, and my role as a corporate communications coordinator is to support our VP of Public Affairs with all external communications. For me, this means a lot of writing, including press releases and managing our many social media accounts. However, my favorite project to work on is helping create our semi-annual publication, The Globe. The Globe highlights all of our ongoing and recently completed projects in both Canada and the U.S. It's my job to write profiles that accurately detail the intricacies of projects like commercial and residential buildings, expanding infrastructure, and telecommunications networks. I think I love it so much because it reminds me of editing the Spotlight publication for AHSC. After staring at my screen for a few more hours, I usually like to go to the gym. But first, pets to Lola, who I dragged across the country with me. You may be wondering, if I work from home 80% of the time, why bother moving to Vancouver? And to that I say, why not move to Vancouver? I saw post-graduation as the time to try something new, and for me, that meant a change of scenery. I made the decision to move out here with a few friends, and then I landed my job through networking with Sasa alumni, of all things. Here's my office. It's very cool and corporate looking. Thankfully, I work with a small team. It's made the transition into a full-time grown-up job much easier. On the days I go in, I like to eat lunch outside. Weather permitting, of course. Time to head to the gym and contemplate life on my walk. I'm doing the Monday to Friday, eight to five thing, and wow is it different than being in university. The nice thing about having free time and living in a well-connected city is the ability to pick up new hobbies. A few months after moving, I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Being done school meant that as soon as I was done my work day, I had free time that was mine to fill instead of having essays looming over my head. Now I train at a few different gyms and have even competed in a competition. Today was actually a really special class as my professor here was being promoted from brown belt to black. Martial arts is how I've made most of my friends in Vancouver, but between you and me, I might actually be returning to London this summer to pursue a new position within the company. Don't worry, Vancouver. I know I'll be back. I caught the sea bus from North Van back downtown to grab a bus home. I grabbed some Thai food with my roommate for dinner, and tomorrow I'll wake up and do it all again, minus the takeout. I am trying to maintain some semblance of a budget. Thanks for coming with me. So that gives you a sense of what happens here in our Hang on. <laughs> that gives you a sense of what happens here in arts and humanities. And uh, before we go further, which we are about to, as you just got a little preview, um, I want to just give a shout out to our academic counselors, Ben and Jen. Ben Hackle and Jennifer Tramble, they're the people you will go to with any questions about your program or if you ever need um, academic consideration because of health or compassionate reasons. And they, they can also point you in the direction of mental health supports on campus, of which there are many. Uh, if you're here on May 7th for our in-person open house, they'll be there on that day too, and you can talk to them uh, in person. But tonight they're here answering your questions in the Q&A. And if you want to reach out directly, you can email us at arts at uwo.ca. We have lots of exciting options in our faculty, and I just want to draw special attention to two of them. You may have heard about our combined degree program with Ivy, and that's where you graduate with a BA with an honor specialization in the arts and humanities program of your choice and an HBA or an honors business administration. 
So it's a, it's a fantastic choice for anyone interested in business and in arts and humanities. We've had many successful graduates from that program and they've always had an excellent experience. And most recently, we've launched a creative arts and production program in collaboration with the faculties of music and information and media studies. And we're just gonna give you a very short video now that gives you an overview of that program and you can apply to that program after your first year. have students be able to uh, pair a BA in, let's say, um, art, or a BA in music, or a BA in media studies with a BA in creativity, um, I think we'll, we'll just allow them to explore um, so many different subjects from different perspectives. At the end of the degree program, feel that they've gotten a chance to, to learn a lot. So for example, students in um, the Faculty of Arts and Humanities will be able to work uh, with students from films and with students from music on um, group projects and um, you know just simply discussing and learning about the, the whole subject of creativity and getting a lot of different perspectives. I think uh, here we've got like a really uh, unique opportunity Western does to curate this program in a way that's different from what's going on in Canada but also globally and I think that we've got the resources to do that we've got the knowledge to do that and I think it really offers students something very special. I think that, you know, teaching students how to uh, really come up with viable transferable skills and not just talk about that as a buzzword, but to show them how to make their existing skills and their skill set and develop new skill sets and make those properly transferable in a way that can set them up to navigate a very challenging job market. I'm really excited about the possibility of creating links between the various art sectors and I think we have a lot of them that live on campus and it's a possibility for our students to connect with one another to, be, to, to gain more awareness about what, what we're doing, how it's done and how one area impacts the other and actually how, um, uh, how the interaction creates deeper uh, creativity uh, in the students. So that's what's exciting me the most. Well, if I can speak personally, um, when I started here at Western, I was 19 or 20, and I started with the idea that I wanted to be a visual arts high school teacher. I've always loved teaching, and uh, I love creating, painting, sculpting, things like that. In my first year studio art class, there was a video art installation uh, unit that just opened my mind to a whole new world of possibilities for expressing myself creatively uh, without having that experience getting my hands on a camera, editing a piece with my classmates, kind of running around campus, getting all of our shots. I don't know where my life would, how my life would have turned out. We're working on, um, already before the program launches, on um, solidifying some of these relationships with different arts organizations in the city. Uh, of London and beyond as well. So there are going to be ways for students to take courses and then as well um, meet with and learn from various members of the arts community um, and from different creative people in that in the arts sector uh, so that they're they're learning from them and also um, kind of meeting with people so that when they finish their degree they'll already have had a chance face to face to meet with people like that and talk about their ideas and learn from them what their experience is like. So it's kind of going beyond the walls of the university and out into the um, world of creatives um, outside the academy. All right, that was fantastic. So thank you, Tracy. Um, now I want to shake things up a little bit uh, again with a couple more polls. So this one is which arts program are you most interested in? We'll give that a few seconds here. I'm loving to see this interest in our new program, Creative Arts and Production. This is fantastic. Give it a couple more seconds. All right, 
right, I'm gonna end that off. All right, so looks like there's a pretty broad mix here. So creative arts and production, English department, French, linguistics, SASA, visual arts, love it. So I love that there's so much interest in our arts programs here. My last poll of the evening is, have you decided if you will be joining Western in September? So yes, I can't wait. I think so, but it's not official yet or still deciding I'm not 100% sure yet. Again, we'll just give that a couple more seconds. All right, looks like most of those are in. All right, love it. 62% of you are committed to coming to Western for Arts. I love it. Um, there's still a little bit of time yet, so that 31% of you, are hopefully this presentation might sway your opinion. And I think so, but it's not official yet. Again, still a little bit of time still, but hopefully we will be seeing all of your lovely faces in September on our campus. I'm now going to uh, ask Tracy and our students to turn their cameras on. And I'd like to start our student panel. Hi again. Um, I'm like, yes. So I'm excited to be joined by Mahi Patel, Jack Bradley, and Sydney Turner, who are all currently arts and humanities students. Hello, students. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let's start with some introductions. So maybe each of you could um, let us know about your program and what year you're in and where you're from. And maybe I better give some order to this. So we'll start with Mahi, and then Sydney, and then Jack. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Mahi. I'm actually graduating from a double major uh, in English and SASA. So uh, if you have any questions about SASA, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, I just finished up my fourth year and then I'm headed back to uh, Markham, Ontario, where I'm from. Um, yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Sydney and I'm in third year pursuing an honor specialization in philosophy. I'm originally from Oakville, Ontario, but I just moved to Grimsby, Ontario because it's closer to my mom's work. But I'm actually staying in London all summer because um, I'll be doing one of the research internships for philosophy. So I'm super excited about that. And last, uh, I'm Jack. I'm in my third year of an honor special in English, a minor in poli sci. Um, and I'm originally from Chatham, but ever since I started at Western, I've just lived in London full time. You just can't pull me away. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Well, nobody's from particularly far away, but I guess, uh, Mahi, you're from the first, <laughs> you're from Markham, Ontario. Um, so it, it must have been, you know, a little bit scary to move away from home and move to to London so what was it like moving what was it like moving from London Mahi? um I mean from Markham to London. yeah yeah I was uh, I was dreading it uh because I was not used to something that was not the sheer size of the GTA um but now I'm dreading going back to the GTA I I cannot deal with having to go back. Uh, I love it in London now. Um, at first, when I did move here, it was a bit different, but I think it was one of the best decisions I made because I was just surrounded by people from all over Ontario, from all over Canada. Um, and I was not expecting the Western community to be so tight knit because I was only used to knowing people from schools that were like commuter schools. So to have, you know, even those who lived off campus lived close to campus. So it was, it was very different for me to have that feel sort of like a tight knit community, that sort of feeling. Um, and it was, it was a great feeling. I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful I, you know, moved here because it was just great. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what was it like making friends? Does someone want to speak to how you made friends when you first got here? I think I can speak to that one, actually. Um, so in first year, I was obviously adjusting to, you know, an entire ne entirely new environment. And I was also having like confliction with like what I wanted to do and what major I wanted to pursue. So I was focusing more on my academics. So I honestly didn't put myself out there as much as I should have in first year. And then second year, 
COVID hit and I was back in Oakville. So my friend opportunities were really limited. So coming into third year, I was actually a little bit nervous because I was like, I didn't really have, you know, the interaction socially that I wanted to have. And I limited myself in that regard. But walking into the Arts and Humanities Student Council was a huge way that I made friends and I didn't expect to make friends that way. I wanted to be a part of AHSC just to, you know, get involved in student politics in the philosophy department and um, just become a student leader. But I didn't realize how many friends and how many bonds that I would make. And I, I honestly feel like those bonds will last a lifetime. And um, that, that wasn't the primary reason I got into AHSC, but I am so glad that I did because that was one way that I made friends personally. Um, because like in first year, like, I was very like introverted, even though I'm not an introvert, but um, I kept to myself. I'm not like someone that parties a whole lot. So like that was something that I also like didn't engage in. And then in third year, just coming, not really knowing anyone and, and not really being like acclimated in the campus because of the year off. Coming into HSC, I just felt so welcomed. It's the most positive environment I've ever been in. And I think it kind of goes against the stereotypical student council um vibe where it's sort of like really really political and clicky and it's absolutely not like that I know I can hype it up in, from a biased perspective but honestly I feel like that was the one way that I made friends almost accidentally awesome does anyone else want to talk about how you made friends when you first got here yeah, so I'll also jump in. Um, so I made friends there were um, a lot of my closest friends were really like strange chance meetings that seem like now looking back it's like well of course that happened it was it was faded um but no so i was actually on um, i was in the same building as sydney was but i was on the opposite floor um because there was the arts and humanities sasa floor with all the art students but i wasn't on that floor i was on the opposite side of the building with all of the stem and kids and they terrified me um but i just kind of wandered over there quite literally knowing nobody <laughs> and just like walked up to um two people and started talking about just random stuff like within two minutes we were talking about like this guy's sandals and now that guy is my best friend at western um so that was a, a really kind of funny experience because it was like we were in the same program like two different programs um we had like gotten here through the same route and yeah i just had never met and then happened to meet because i decided to wander onto a random floor um and ever since then the arts and humanities floor kind of adopted me it was like i was in their group chat um and more active in their group chat than like the residence group chat on my side. Um, and that's something that I really love about the arts faculty is as much as there are a lot of really friendly people at Western Arts is really that place where you can quite literally walk up to someone and just start talking and they will just start talking back. Um, and it's not weird. Whereas like, you know, in high school, it might be a little strange if you don't already know everyone, you just walk up and sit at a table, they would be like, hello. But that is not, that is not arts. Um, so that would be my biggest recommendation is just just start talking to someone um, and you will find yourself with a good group of people. Thank you. What about, well, we know that you guys, you're two of you at least, I don't know about Mahi, are in the student council, but who joined a club or a sport or council or some kind of, um, you know, mentoring? Who did something kind of right away? Okay, <laughs> Mahi, why don't you? say what you did. Um, yeah, I, I was very introverted in first year. Um, I also lived off campus. So I was very, mm -hmm. I felt very isolated, even though I wasn't. Um, but I, I definitely try to sort of get out there, you know, just, you know, make myself known to some people at least. Uh, so I joined a couple of clubs. At, at Western, we normally have uh, during the first week of September and not first week, but during one week in September and during one week in January, we have clubs weeks uh, where like they, uh, the university students council gets a space and all the clubs at the university um, have boots and you sign up for these, you know, clubs and then you have meetings over the whole year and you have events and um, all of that. So I, I signed up for a club uh, that sort of worked for uh, poverty alleviation in the London community. Um, I was I was a first year representative. Uh, that, that just included like a lot of admin, like communication sort of stuff that helped me build my skills. But um, I did meet some really interesting people. That was the upside of it. And um, one of the good things about 
university, I guess, is also that, you know, you're not just hanging out with other first year students, you also get to engage with others like in upper years. Um, and it's not weird as, as Jack said, like as a lot of things are or seem in high school, um, you, you just get to, you know, make friends regardless. There's, there, there's none of that confusion or complex when it comes to age or like what year someone is in. So I think I met a lot of uh, fun people that way through Clubs Week. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity uh, to just, you know, get involved, um, to find things to do at Western that are not classroom, that are not in a classroom. Um, yeah. It's amazing how much there is, a, like when you go to Clubs Week, it's almost overwhelming. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like anyone, 200 clubs. I yeah, think. exactly. Does yeah. anyone have one in particular that they recommend? Um, yes. So I am totally going to break what you said. I'm going to recommend two. Um, and that's oh, that's fine. Great, the great thing is that there are so many different ones. So with um, in the first year or so, I joined the photography club and the pre-law society, which are two very opposing interests, or not opposing, but it's two very like separated interests. And that's the great thing is you are not limited. If you have all those different types of interests, you're like, I don't know what I want to do. Um, there's a club for quite literally everything. The people are so friendly. They're so helpful on the pre-law side or any type of like um, professional prep club. Um, they're just really help, like helpful. People walk in, you have no idea. Like, you're like, I want to go to law, but like, what is an LSAT? And they're like, oh, and then they'll like lay it out for you and have like a whole, they'll have a whole events. And then there's so many creative clubs, um, like the photography club where you can really just like pursue that passion or learn if you're just like vaguely interested. Um, there are so many people there that just want to share their passion with you, regardless of what your level of experience is. Um, those do I recommend, but I found that it's pretty consistent with most of them in that regard. Sydney? Um, I was also on Pre-Law Society and loved it, but one that I recently stumbled upon and love is Purple Yogis, which is the yoga club um, at Western, which is under the USC. I'm actually a student instructor, so I've taught um, yoga Pilates, like energy, energizing Pilates, or energizing Pilates yoga flows. Like I do a lot of like yoga and Pilates based classes like feel good flow. So if you've ever like dabbled in yoga or Pilates or like working out or, you know, meditation or anything like that, I would really recommend Purple Yogis because even though all of our classes have been on Zoom, they've been incredibly engaging and all of the student instructors are really, really knowledgeable. And there's a lot of different types of yoga that you'll engage in in the club. So more like um, breath focused and there are some that are more like workout based. That's kind of what I teach. Um, so you'll get a whole kind of spectrum of yoga and even someone like myself, like I'm not certified yo in yoga instruction, but I am certified as a fitness instructor. So I also, also learned a lot through being involved in that club. So I would recommend it, especially since it's like taking care of your physical and your mental health. I think it's just an amazing club and it's run incredibly well. Thanks. Mai, do you want to suggest a club? Um, I, I joined a club called Movies and Videos Productions Club. It's it's a very small club from what I remember. It was in my third year. Um, and they just get together and make films, like using whatever they have, just like even a cell phone, even like the cheapest cam camera you can find. They they try to just make films out of everything. And um, it was the most fun thing ever. They You learn so much about film production. Um, you get to participate in film competitions. Uh, I know when I was leaving, they were preparing a film to be shown at the Forest City Book Film Festival. They were going to submit a film for it. So um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool if, if you're into that. Um, I was also going to suggest like faculty-based, but not exactly faculty-based clubs. Uh, uh, there's a spoken word um, club that's called, I think, Penned by Western. I think that's their name. Yeah, uh, they're amazing. They have these, it's not, you know, even if you're scared by the prospect of having to perform they have these little like couches and cookie sessions where you just sit and share your ideas with each other um it's yeah as, as jack said it's everyone's really nice everyone's always really nice uh and it's just you know a great way to explore your creativity well so there's a lot of clubs but also it's not only clubs that's not all we do at west <laughs> not all extracurriculars. I wonder if each of you could tell us about your favorite course in arts and humanities so far. 
Yeah, so um, I will jump in and I would say that um, there are a lot of close races, but I would say that right now my favorite course has been um, Indigenous Literatures of Turtle Island. Um, I found that that was course was um, was like really helpful in exploring, you know, the literatures beyond what we might typically see um, in the Western world, especially coming out of high school. Um, I found that it was really enriching. Also, like it was a chance for me to connect with my own indigeneity. Um, and that's something that there is a lot of in the arts uh, faculty where you can um, look at theory, look at artists, and then also find where you might be able to connect um, yourself in places you might not have, um, or in ways you might not have been able to before. Um, but the the arts programs, even just within English alone, are so diverse, like whether it's like, you know, you're looking at creativity, you're looking at race studies, you're looking at cultural studies, you're looking at look, looking at like poetry, <laughs> taking all these different courses at the same time has been great, but I think Indigenous Lit has to top the chart for right now. Um, my favorite course, I mean, I could say every single course I've taken in philosophy because I haven't found one thus far that I haven't enjoyed, but I would say the two that are the top contenders right now are power, oppression, and privilege, and gender and race, both of which were taught by our philosophy chair, Carolyn McLeod. Um, the courses are quite closely related. The former kind of is an introduction to the latter, and the latter is a, cro um, a cross-listed grad course. So I got to interact with a lot of PhD um, students and uh, master's students. Um, as the name suggests, um, you are taught about a obviously power, oppression, and privilege, and how they all kind of work together, and how oppression is structural by nature. And then in gender and race, you're kind of looking specifically at the concepts of gender and race and whether they are social constructions or have a kernel of truth in terms of their biological aspect. Um, we talked a lot about different racial groups and groups that don't necessarily currently have a racial category in society. So we talked a lot about the indigenous community. We also in, um, explored the multiracial experience, which is something that kind of hit close to home for me because um, I am multiracial. And um, I got to explore my multiraciality and I actually wrote an essay about the multiracial experience in that class. And it was something that I kind of really didn't touch on my entire life, the 21 years I've existed on this earth. So it was something that I never really related to because it wasn't talked about. You don't really talk about multiraciality in any other class. So the fact that I was able to engage in such a deep way about something that related to me was really awesome, especially since that's something that's like rarely touched upon in any other class. So I really enjoyed both of those ones. That's excellent. I named the course Power, Privilege, and Oppression. That's my title. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mahi, do you want to tell us about your favorite class so far? Um, yeah, there is two actually, and they're like polar opposites of each other. Uh, the first one is um, reading Jane Austen. It's it's a third year course that I took with Professor Mary Helen McMurrin. Um, yeah, it wasn't your standard writing essays about things, but we were just doing some really close reading, um, trying to look at writing trends of the time, uh, digging into Jane Austen's personal life. Um, read a lot of Jane Austen, obviously. Uh, we watched some of the adaptations. We did discuss some of the adaptations. So there was that. And then on the complete opposite was um, this course on global literatures. Uh, it was a survey course, which means that you just, you know, look at literature from like a wide range of sources. And um, it was just, you know, a, a, round, a trip around the world in literature. Um, I, I got to study a literature and books and texts by Canadian writers that I didn't think I'd get access to otherwise, such as like uh, Thompson Highway, who, who is a Western alum, I think, um, and uh, also Shyam Salvadurai. So I never thought I'd get access to some of these amazing writers if it wasn't for courses like these um, that really bring them out and sort of, you know, discuss them, te teach us how to, you know, read them in a critical lens, how to, you know, just read critically in general. So yeah, those two courses for sure. Top. Yeah. I love hearing about all of your classes. Like there is so much good stuff to take, not just in arts and humanities, but certainly in arts and humanities, but all over campus. You can't even take everything that you want to take at Western. It's pretty exciting. Um, okay. So what about, um, hmm, residents? So each of, no, actually, 
Mahi lived off campus, right? Yeah, yeah, I lived off campus. Um, so what maybe um Doc and Sydney could tell us about residence, and then maybe you could comment, Mahi. Well, I think everybody lives off campus now. So we could comment a bit about what it's like to live off campus in London too. Yeah, um, I can start us off. Um, I was in Ontario Hall, um, and it was I, I really miss Ontario Hall, um, although there are like, you know, also pros to being able to live off campus in your house with just your closest friends. Um, but my favorite thing um, about Ontario Hall, as much as I know, I should be talking about how wonderful the people were, which they were. Um, the food was so good. <laughs> um, and I would go downstairs like for dinner more than once a day. <laughs> like, um, like I would, I would be down there for breakfast because their breakfast was great. And I'm like, oh, I have to get here first. And then lunch comes. I'm like, oh, but it's lunch and their lunch is great too. So I have to get there first. And then it'd be dinner. And I'm like, oh, but their dinner's the best. I have to get there first. Um, and then there would also be an after dinner time where you would go down and you'd get like little, little night uh, treats. And then um, I would go down there with some of the friends that I met. Um, who were in my program and not my program, we would get like snacks and we would just watch movies in the lounge, um, casual, casual studying or when we're done studying or when we just needed a breather. Um, there are so many lounges all over the place where you can just like relax in common areas and put things on the TV or study quietly or go down to the cafe and eat food. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you, I'm a big fan of the food. We already know the people are great. You're going to hear us say that so many times. Um, so for the newest edition, you know, make use of that meal plan um, because you will not regret it. I echo everything that you just said. Um, <laughs> the food is really great. Um, I do have dietary restrictions that I've kind of like recently stumbled upon and there were pretty decent accommodations for that. So I'm gluten intolerant and dairy, like lactose intolerant. So um, there are pretty decent options. Um, and I know that they've continued to work on that since I was there. Um, but one thing that I loved about O.O. Hall was the amenities. Um, there's a gym on the third floor. Um, it's a small gym, but it was really nice after five hours of lectures to just take a couple steps because I was on the third floor as well, um, walk around the corner and go to the gym for about an hour and then head downstairs for dinner. Um, I love that there was like a media room. Um, we can watch movies. Um, the dining hall is like quite large, so it's not like you're gonna not find a seat. Um, but yeah, in terms of the food, like I never ate on campus, like in any of the campus eateries, I always came back to eat in Oak Hall, um, because it's just, it's amazing, honestly. Um, for me, the nice thing about Oak Hall is that you can study there, because I know a lot of the residences, some are louder, some are like, quote unquote, party residences, I found that I was able to actually study in my residence, and I loved that, but it's not so quiet that you can't have a good time. So that's kind of the duality of Ohal is like it's really fun, but it's also a good place to study and to unwind after a long day. Um, and obviously the people you meet there are great. Um, my, all of my four, everyone was really friendly and we got to know each other. We had weekly meetings. So um, there were a lot of bonding opportunities. So um, yeah, I couldn't say anything horrible at, about O'Hall. My experience there was amazing. Everything from the gym to the food, to the people, to the room itself, very big room, very nice. But yeah. Oh, sounds great. I didn't know the food was so good. <laughs> um, Mahi, do you wanna tell us a bit about the off-campus living experience in London? Um, yeah, uh, moving here, I think one of my biggest concerns was just commuting from like, to and from campus, uh, but I think it's very accessible. Uh, the LTC has been pretty reliable for for the most part. Um, the, uh, it like there's like a lot of resources uh, available to you. I think the website is offcampus.uwo.ca. Uh, they have a whole website dedicated to just off-campus housing um, and they like you know they also help you if you're looking for a place depending on like what your needs are. They, they list um, a lot of, you know, like uh, house listings, room listings on the website or on their Twitter page. I, I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, there, there's a lot of resources to help you find a place to maintain that place. If you have any conflicts with uh, roommates or tenants, they can help you with that as well. Um, 
yeah, I, uh, yeah, I can't say too much about residence food, but uh, the campus eateries are pretty nice. Uh, I think any Western person, I think the, the language that we all use to communicate with each other is the spoke bagel language, uh, with what our favorite spoke bagel is. Uh, the spoke and the wave are classic campus eateries with classic events all that happen all year round. Um, they're pretty iconic, not much to say about that. The food is amazing. It's it's very accessible uh, to get there to uh, like on your way to classes, um, even after classes, if you know, if you just want to grab a quick bite um, before you head home, um, it's, it's pretty easy to get there. Yeah, it's it's off campus was a very interesting experience when everyone else I knew from Toronto was living in residence, but I think I did not miss out on much. Uh, it was it was great. Yeah. Excellent. So I think I'll go around with one more question that each of you can ask, which is what advice would you give your first year self knowing what you know now? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll start this one off. I would say that, um, and as much as this is a good problem to have, because there are so many wonderful things that you can get involved with on campus, um, I would say make sure that you also make time for yourself, just taking care of your mental well-being. Um, it's so easy to commit to so many things because there are so many wonderful opportunities on campus. There are like, um, there are like 200 clubs. And then there's like, beyond that, there are like also like 10 clubs just within the arts that aren't even part of those clubs. And then there's so many like councils to join. There's so many courses you want to take. You might want to overload. Um, and I would say that my recommendation is maybe give yourself a second to breathe and just think about which ones you are really, really passionate about. And you can still take on quite a few things, um, but just try and sort of, I guess, learn your capacity, um, make sure that, you know, you learn your own social battery, learn what you can take on in terms of other commitments. You learn um, how you might want to balance your academics, because that is something that is, um, I think, sometimes difficult to to balance. Um, and like I said, it's it's better than, you know, not having that problem sometimes because I know in high school there's nothing to do. So I was so excited about all the stuff that we could do here. Um, but yes, remember that you are still a person and you know you are not a machine, even if it's like even sometimes passions and things that are like creative, they still do take up your time. Um, so yeah, my that is that is the advice I'd probably give to my first year self is uh, and maybe even my current self is know to breathe, know to just like relax, <laughs> give yourself some relaxation time um, and just sit down with some friends because those clubs aren't going anywhere and those opportunities are going to be here the entire time you're doing your degree. There will be no shortage of them. Um, so make the most of your time, but still give yourself some time. Thank you. Next. Next. Yeah, we're mom. Awesome. We're already here. Okay. Um, this one's diff difficult because I feel like I could give myself so many different pieces of advice. But the one thing that I would say to my first year self is embrace what may come. Um, for me, I was originally um, pursuing a honor specialization in creative writing in English language and literature, and I was in SASA. And now I'm currently in an honor spec in philosophy. So I kind of jumped ship but I kind of didn't embrace it at first. I was very, very hesitant to switch up. Um, I'm very much type A, if anyone knows me, you know that. Um, and um, enjoying something I didn't think I would enjoy or finding a new passion that I never anticipated finding was honestly kind of stressful because it feels like it switches up your mindset and your goals and your aspirations. And being resistant to that is almost putting a damper on yourself and your future. So allowing yourself to embrace what comes, whether that be academically or otherwise, um, embrace new friendships, embrace new opportunities, embrace new um, opportunities for involvement, um, embrace the courses that you're in. Um, don't be resistant to change because obviously you're undergoing a huge endeavor coming to university. It's a new environment, a new experience, but just kind of allow yourself to seize the moment and the opportunities that come for you and just be open and receptive to anything. Great. My advice to your first year self. Um, I'd tell myself to definitely use, make use of all of the resources that are available to me. 
uh, and to not deal with everything on my own, um, because that it that can be a practice, a very instinctive practice uh, that you just you know do when you're starting something new. You just feel like you have to take everything on yourself uh, and have to just deal with it because that's what it is. But uh, that's not the case. And um, there are lots and lots of resources available, not just, you know, um, with like your health or mental health or physical health, but with like anything with academic uh, resources, academic counseling at Arts Humanities is amazing. I can, I can vouch for our academic counselors and the services that they provide for us, uh, the help that they give us uh, with anything. Um, and also the, the, other academic uh, resources, such as uh, as an English major, if you're struggling with writing, there's a writing and writing center that helps you with, you know, your essays or anything like that. If you are struggling with study strategies, uh, there's there's a whole other student experience, uh, you know, department dedicated to that. If you're having struggles with mental health, uh, as, as Tracy mentioned earlier, there's like a whole new department for that. I think we just opened up in a new building too. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of resources with that. So I think I would definitely um, make myself, uh, make use of those resources. Uh, as a first year, you even have SOFs and um, yeah, SOFs uh, who as, you know, not just faculty SOF, but also resident SOFs who are there to, you know, just coach you, guide you, coax you through the whole process of being a first year student, which is uh, a very daunting thing to be. Um, so yeah, I would definitely just reach out and ask for help when I need it and not deal with things myself. That that would that would just make things a uh, hundred times easier. And it would also make your experience so much more worth it at Western. All excellent advice. Thank you. So now I think we're going to move. I think Lauren's going to take over again. We're going to move to a live q &A. Yes, indeed. But I, I absolutely have to say that is some fantastic advice from our students. So thank you for sharing those experiences. And I also want to say to I think it was Mahi who brought up the iconic spoke bagel that it is a rite of passion passage for pretty much everybody to try uh, a spoke bagel and then create that special combo that is just the go to every time they have to have one. So I know mine is a jalapeno cheddar with that cucumber dill cream cheese. I don't know what everybody else's is, but absolutely make sure that when you come to campus, whether it's for open house or as a first year student that you test out that spoke bagel. But uh, I'd like to jump into some questions that we've had uh, come through the chat. So the first one is um, if maybe we could explain the process for a student that wants to take a language class and maybe either has a little bit of experience in that language or maybe they're testing out that language for the first time, what exactly is it that they need to do? Am I answering this or is one of the academic counselors answering this? I, 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 let me take a stab at it. So it depends on the language. Some languages, like for example, French and Spanish, a lot of people have backgrounds in those that they've studied before in high school, for example. So some of the departments will have placement tests for that so that you go into the right level of class. You, you know, if you've got uh, a whole bunch of years of, of French already, you don't want to go into French for people who have never spoken a word of it ever. Uh, and similarly with the other languages. So there are placement tests um, designed to get you into the right level of class. And, and so the first thing you would do if you just, once you decide on the language that you want to take would be uh, to take one of those um, placement tests. If, you know, or if you know that, hey, I've never spoken a word of this language, I'm doing it from the beginning, then you would uh, sign up for a beginner's class. So it, it, it just depends on the language, what your experience with the language is, uh, and we take it from there. Perfect, thank you. Um, what would you say differentiates a Western Arts and Humanities graduate uh, in the job market? Oh, you're muted, Tracy. Yes, yes, yes. They never, arts and humanities graduates never forget to unmute themselves. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people will say that, of course, our degrees will equip students for some of the more obvious career paths, like law school, you know, 
two of our students tonight said they were in the pre-law society. So law school, education, medical school, these are professional pathways that our degrees do equip people for. But also, um, you'll hear people talk a lot about transferable skills. And at Western, you know, in arts and humanities, we really, really equip our students with clear communication skills, whether it be written or oral, um, creative problem solving. Uh, you know, our students are, are, are very well developed critical thinkers. Uh, they can work through complex ideas. Uh, they're often artistic as well. So we've got creative writers, visual artists, filmmakers, performers. You know, lots of our grads um, can communicate in more than one language, as we've just discussed. And, and a good uh, many of them have traveled abroad as part of their studies. So we really think of ourselves as educating or uh, like global citizens, you know, as kind of cultivating global citizens. And, and also um, our students have awareness of like indigenous issues in Canada and various diversity and equity issues. You know, we have very social justice oriented um, thinkers amongst us as well. And so, you know, each arts and, arts and humanities student at Western is different, but everybody's, you know, everyone, as you've seen, these are just three students, but every single one of our students is really generally a smart and interesting person who cares about humanity and cares about ideas and cares about the arts. Um, so that's something that I would say all of our graduates bring to the world. I think that's fantastic. So thank you. That was a really good answer. Um, for this, oh, Jack, please. Yeah, um, technically I'm down, I think our student time is done, but I did want to just jump in with that one really quick actually, because I know you mentioned grad students, but I also want to, talk about how these opportunities will come to you before you even graduate. Um, and as uh, as Dr. Isaac said, like these skills are so transferable because um, as much as I, I am taking that route where I'm going like, oh, English law, it'll help me like, you know, like um, that comprehension that, you know, that writing, all that type of stuff is what's I think going to equip me well. But in the meantime, um, I just, and this might sound a little, a little self plug, um, but I just got a job as an analyst at Health Canada. Um, and there were a lot of transferable skills from my classes that I think really helped me out. Of course, there was like that policy English side of things. But what I think what really one of the classes that I took that really equipped me was I was taking this performance class. that was kind of out of the rest of my English stuff. And that made me, I didn't know how much that would help me with things like interviews. Um, or how much that would help me with things like pitches because of that like ability to project yourself that confidence that I think you can't really find in a lot of other programs. Um, so because of how complex and diverse these programs are, even just your own program specifically, um, there are so many directions you can go and these opportunities um, when you seek them out can come to you before you graduate um, over the summer, those types of internships, that type of stuff was never something in high school I thought would be really for me. And then this program showed me how wrong I was and how how much you can use these skills. Um, so yeah, just to, just to interject a bit there. Um, no, there that's are a lot awesome, of Zach. Thank you. No, and for sure, we wanted you three to stay because we do want you to jump in when you have something to contribute to these questions. And yes, we have internships. You know, Sydney mentioned that she's doing a research internship on campus. We also have internships with community partners out in um, London and beyond. Um, so there are different kind, different sorts of uh, experiences that people can have for work integrated learning. I'm just going to jump in with the last question here, just to make sure we, we're cognizant of our time. Um, what is a way to see the campus? Can you take a tour? And the third part to that is, would you recommend somebody kind of walk around campus after they've got their schedule to help navigate where their classes are going to be? Definitely. Campus is huge. <laughs> so um, even, you know, even professors who have been here for a long time, like I've been here for 30 years, I always go and check out my room and make sure I can find it before the first day of class because I've taught all over campus in various rooms. So to answer the last question, Lauren, for sure, once you have your schedule, You'll have your schedule. It'll have all the rooms on it. I would go to every single building and locate every single room 
and use that as kind of a way of starting to orient yourself to campus because you'll have destinations you know that that you want to find um but we do have campus tours they're running um all through the summer i believe i actually maybe you can say more about the schedule um but one thing that we're having very soon is that on may 7th we're having an in-person open house on campus and we would love to, to have you visit. There are going to be campus tours that day. Uh, we're also going to have um, little handouts with self-guided tours of the visual arts building. Um, we're going to be in University College that day, a bunch of us, to meet you and answer any questions that you have. Sydney's going to be, I don't know if we've already <laughs> told you. You're going to, or asked you, I should say. Um, so yeah we're gonna um be very excited to welcome you that day and you know show you our beautiful western really is a beautiful campus um and the the best way to get to know it is to just um open up the campus map on your phone and and walk around but also take a campus tour so you can hit the highlights kind of thing and, and learn how to orient yourself when university college is the big building at the top of the hill with the square tower on it once you know that, it's a good place to start. <laughs> Can I also just jump in on this one? Um, sure. In, in first year, um, I obviously in, on during a week, hopefully those festivities will still happen, COVID permitting, but you do see a kind of a glimpse of campus and you do get um, to do tours and like walk around. But um, I was still really, really scared that I was gonna get lost. So one of the days um, before my first class, um, in first year, I walked to campus and kind of did my daily routes to each building in each classroom. I just like threw on a workout outfit and I just walked around in the summer um, and got a lay of the land and I did it multiple times. Not only was it a really nice walking workout, but it was also a really nice way to like make myself feel more like acclimated and like used to it. So I knew that I wouldn't get lost and I knew exactly where each building was and each classroom. And I could also walk the route. So if you have like two classes back to back, you know that you have like a 10 minute span to get to one or the other. So um, it was a good way for me to feel a bit more confident. And I did it for every semester. And even this year I did it and I'm in third year and I know where everything is, but I just like, it makes me feel more comfortable. So I would definitely recommend doing that. It was a really good idea for me. Thank you, what a great ritual. I was just about to say the same thing. I need to tour my campus as well, to the campus myself as well, so I know where all the classes are. So um, I do wanna say thank you to everyone that's uh, on the panel today, both our students and our presenters. This is all the time that we have. Um, and I also wanna say a huge thank you to all of our participants. Um, you are the reason that we do this and, and why we're here today. Uh, we hope that you got all of the information that you need. Uh, if there's any more questions, we will stay on for a few more minutes just to make sure that they are all answered. Um, but if you think of something to ask us a little bit later on, you can connect with us uh, at e uh, by email at welcome at uwo.ca. Or if you wanted to reach out to the Faculty of Arts directly, you can email them at arts at uwo.ca or follow their Instagram account at Western U Arts. Um, in the meantime, though, I do want to wish all of you the best of luck on your journey to university, and I wish you all a wonderful evening. So thank you. <laughs>